What's up fam? My name is Bobby King and this is going to be a fun video. It's been something that I've uh, had written on my list to do for a while, but it's what the church searched for in 2022. That data is going to be a little bit skewed. It's not necessarily just what the church searched for. It's church, Christians, people questioning things about church and Christianity questions and issues and all of those different things. So you're going to see, I have my phone out. I'm going to be looking at a resource, but essentially this is something that it gives us a little bit of an insight as Christians, people working in the church, um, people, you know, caring about people in their community and how to reach them possibly in the best way. So that's what we're talking about today. All right, so I want to first shout out the website that did this. The website is called Intimacy with God, and their logo actually is, is says Pursuing Intimacy with God, so I don't know what affiliation or anything they are with that, but they've done the research of pulling the top internet searches for religious or theological questions or things that relate in those kind of ways. So they pulled the top 100 in 2022. So all of these numbers that I'm going to say is based off of search volume in a month. So starting it off, number one thing search for in a month that relates to church, Christianity, types of things we talk and speak into is the question, what is love? I don't know if they're talking about the song. I don't know if they're, um, you know, just looking for a new dating profile or anything like that, but it gives us a really huge insight because seven point, almost, almost 7.5, it's 7.48 million searches a month were what is love. So, we know the answer of that. God is love. Um, what he showed and displayed for us by sending his son um, here to the earth to die for all of our sins is the ultimate example of love. But that's what people search for. That is what the world is searching for this month that relates with church and Christianity. Like that is the number one slot and it's double the number two slot. And that's just mind-blowing and insane to me. But what is love? And as Christians, we we know that answer, but it's something that we may need to do a better job here in 2023 and moving forward is, is explaining why, you know, helping people understand what, what love is, what it means in, in the inherent form, but then also like what spiritually it means and how it can impact us and how it can impact our lives. Number two, who is Jesus. It's 2.7 million searches a month. Who is Jesus? So these people obviously are at least on the questioning spectrum of where they are in their spiritual timeline and flow is who is Jesus? And that's huge because that answer is super findable. It's Googleable. It's all of those different things. But do we want people in our communities, in our faith circles, Googling that? There's a lot of people that have better SEO, which is search engine optimization than us at churches that can speak into this. So people could write an article, have really good SEO and say, Jesus was a fictional character. Well, we know that's not true, but because of how it showed up in their search results, when people are typing this, that could be an option. We need to take sometimes a look back at all of the different things that we're doing and really focus on almost what the the simplicity of the gospel is and really just take hey these are simple things what is love who is jesus those things i feel like should be inherent but being in the church world in church context sometimes we get kind of veiled to those different things so that's super interesting 2.7 million um searches a month on that next is what is the big bang Whatever theories um, you have about those things where you mix church and science or whether it's just church and there's no science, I'm not wanting to get into those conversations, but people are thinking about the start of existence. Well, in church, in church world, we know. Well, like we, we can go back Genesis first and second chapter, how the world was crafted and created, right? And so with that, we can speak in to this question. There were also 2.7 uh, million searches for that a month. Just as much as who is Jesus, what is the Big Bang? That's wild. Number four, what is the church? 
this question is super deep. That's why I started my conversation um, podcast called Church Conversations, because we talk about what is the church, um, what it is to those individuals, what it is to the capital C church at large, what it is to the lower C local church, all of those different things. But what is church? And that's what 2.2 million searches. I would say also this one as a church, we church as a capital C church, we have one of the hardest jobs explaining because it's different for all of us. Um, you know, to me, it can be, you know, a body of believers coming together in a in a corporate type of gathering, whether that's five people, whether that's 5,000 people, um, you know, body of believers getting together, equipping, you know, helping widows and orphans, doing all the, like, we are a body of uh, people together in a localized area coming together, online, in person, all that fun stuff. Like, that's where I'm at. But to you, it may be slightly different. It may be, you know, oh, it's a place we go on Sunday mornings or it's the place where my kids get discipled. Well, there's so many different examples and different things. Um, but that's what's getting searched. Number four out of a hundred things in a month that relate to church Christianity world. Number five, I thought this was cool, is what is the Salvation Army? The church funded Salvation Army and probably still does in a lot of ways, but obviously they're big enough now to where they receive their own funding and things of that nature. But churches, hospitals, things like that, that those institutions exist because of the church. Um, we had people that started those things, set them up. Then we equipped, resourced, and trained them to do the things that they're doing um, now, most of them without necessarily church oversight. Obviously, a lot of people in those organizations still are high attenders and volunteers and staff members and lay people that just love that ministry, all of those things. But it's cool that people are asking, what is the Salvation Army? That's number five. Number six, what is money? You would think that that really doesn't apply here to the church world, but in reality, it does. God has very uh, clear words when he talks about money. One, that it's not ours, right? It's his and how we're supposed to steward that. We're supposed to, you know, use them for what he has called us to do and steward that uh, with our talents, right? So that one's super interesting. What is money? Um, number seven, what is sin? Man, like it's wild to me that 1.5 million people in a month search what is sin. That is honestly a little heartbreaking um, because they're searching for it, but yet they don't know that they're in it every single day and what that means to their life and what that means to how they're being impacted and influenced and all of those different things that they want to go and search Google 1.5 million times a month of what is sin, the thing that separates us from God, the thing that can keep us out of heaven if we don't repent and, you know, accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. That is wild, wild to me. That's the number seventh largest search in this category. Number eight, same number, 1.5 million. Who is God? Man, you're going to get so many different searches with that. You're going to get every religion. You're going to get every everything like that. But there's 1.5 million people a month searching for that question. How can we speak into that? As the church, how can we guide them in the, the right direction? How can we train and equip our saints to have those conversations in our churches, in their communities, in their jobs, in their schools, in all of the different areas and spheres of their life. How can we make that impact daily of being able to be the only Jesus that, you know, they may ever see, which then opens the door to, you know, another opportunity, or they get invited to a Bible study and get to experience God. And man, like, what can we do to help these 1.5 million that is that is a capital C church question that we need to figure out here moving forward. Nine, this is more for our Catholic brothers and sisters, but what are the seven deadly sins? These, of course, are sins in you know all faith expressions as well in the Christian church, but Catholics are more in, involved with that and, and talk about those seven deadly sins. But 1.2 million people search that a month. Number 10 is is what is Psalm 91? 
with 1.2 million searches. So this one's a little cool because people must be seeing it, right? They wouldn't know what Psalms is. They wouldn't know what chapter it would be. They must be seeing this somewhere. And so, or it's a part of their life. So if they're a Christian looking it up or things of that nature. But I want to take a little bit of a flashback of when Tim Tebow won the national championship and he had John 316 written on his eye black. The number one search thing that day and a little bit moving forward was John 316. And it's cool because it was just something that was written on his face, pretty much, that then sparked people to go search for it. And so with Psalm 91, that is the chapter um, about being my refuge in my fortress, right? So he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadows of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge in my fortress, my God in whom I trust. So for some reason, people are looking this up, whether it must have been a trend or or that they saw on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, something sparked them to be able to type in this verse. And that's crazy that 1.2 million people um, looked up what is Psalm 91. So here, so those were the top 10, right? Those were the top 10 boys. I'm going to start skipping around a little bit. Um, but some of these are really just amazing Um you know, in here we can put in the the show notes of this video too, um, to this link directly, so y'all can see all of them. But things like what is life, what is the Bible, what is meditation, um, what is hell, where are there churches near me, um, what is prayer, what is a Christian, what is Mormonism, what is even reality, what what was Noah's Ark, what is communion, what is the Baptist Church, who am I? Man, like that one is wild. Who am I? How can Google answer that for you? I mean, AI and things like that are getting good, but how how can Google answer that? It's probably going to provide articles and it's probably going to do a bunch of different things, but the heartbreaking aspect of that is there's people that are going to an inanimate source of on the internet asking, "Who am I?" 300,000 people a month search for that. Like that is, that's insane. Uh, what is truth? What did Jesus look like? We all want to know, right? What is the meaning of life? What is the apostles creed? Who is Peter in the Bible? What does eternal mean? Some of these questions are absolutely fascinating. I would say as a church, as the church, as the capital C church, we need to look at these things. We need to look at these internet trends and these internet sources because man, like, you could build sermon series around these things. Like, what is the true Jesus church? You may not write it that way, but what is the true church? What is a deity? What is evangelist? Who is the Holy Spirit? Like, there's people doing Holy Spirit sermon series all the time, but like, who is the Holy Spirit? Like, take it practically for people. In the last one, the, the hundredth one, which still had 110,000 searches in the month is what are the names of God? That's crazy, y'all. Like, this is something that is very showing about the human race right now. Like, again, this is 2022. Like, this is fresh. This is not, um, you know, five years ago. This is not 45 years ago. 2022 internet searches by monthly volume in relation to church-based context slash stuff that the church speaks into. We have a part to play in this digital space. We as the capital C church, we play a part and we also have a responsibility to be able to speak into these things. Hopefully, we are able to create content and create resources and create things to help these people navigate these questions. Because I know that other people in other industries and in other religions and other different faith bases and people that are faith based lists and all of those different things are also looking at these stats and looking at these questions and they're creating content around that. They should. The, the volume speaks for itself. So, when you're looking for ideas, when you're looking for conversations to start in 2023, take a look at this list. Take a look at similar lists. Um, you know, Barna Group has tons of research, or even if you want to go more practical, like to niches, like go to youth ministry websites or um, children's ministry websites and search what people 
are posting and creating content for because most likely it lines up with what the world is searching for. That's what we're here to do, right? We're here to make heaven crowded. We're here to have more people in the kingdom tomorrow than we did today. And with that, as the church, we really need to think about what people are searching for. I know in this era that we are the most connected to as many people as possible, but in reality, it's also the most disconnected we've ever been. We're the most disunified people and humans have ever been. We're so unreliant on other people. There's people that go through their life and speak to one person in a week, in a month, in a year. People have just gotten to be able to be so isolated and going off into their own different universes. And some of those are super cool and people speaking into those spaces. But we really need to take our, essentially the writing on the wall of what the world is talking about and what the church is doing and essentially parallel this to what we are teaching and training and educating our churches about, educating our Christians about, educating new Christians, people questioning um, all of those different things. So here in 2023, let's make a stand um, right now against these questions, right? These questions need to be answered and they need to be answered by God himself through his people um, in the church, whether you're a normal, um, you know, a, what they call a lay person, you're a church attender, or this is church staffs making educated decisions about what church should be talking about. All of those things. Let's make a stand today to answer some of these questions of where when people are searching, they're going to find our content looking for that. Well, here at Hashtag Church, we want to resource and equip churches to navigate through the digital era. That's a super difficult task, but it's one that we are called to do. And so with that, here at Hashtag Church, we are creating articles, videos, podcasts, talking about all of these different things. We want to be able to speak into pre-K spaces. We want to be able to talk about worship and media and tech arts, but we also want to provide you with um, handy use cases of like the top five youth games to play this summer. All of those things you will be able to eventually see here at Hashtag Church. Give us a little time. We're still building everything out. And as we obviously continue along in this year, we're just going to be adding more content and more content and all of that. You can also check us out on social media in most areas we are hashtag dot church we're still trying to get them in some of the other areas but if you see the yellow icon with a black hashtag you are in the right place and we would love to connect with you there and join our community and join our hashtag family so thanks so much and we'll see you next time